Deep beneath the churning surface of the Pacific Ocean, far from sight and buried under a mile of seawater, a massive volcano breathes. It inflates and deflates like a living creature, building pressure over years before silently erupting in a burst of molten lava. This is Axial Seamount, one of the most active and closely watched underwater volcanoes on Earth. But its significance extends far beyond its fiery heart. What if this remote seafloor giant held critical clues about one of North America's most terrifying seismic threats? Just a few hundred kilometers to the east lies the Cascadia Subduction Zone, a ticking geological time bomb capable of producing devastating earthquakes and tsunamis. At first glance, Axial and Cascadia seem like separate worlds, one birthing new ocean crust, the other swallowing it. Yet they are bound by a hidden tectonic current, part of the same powerful engine reshaping the Pacific Northwest from the ocean floor to the coastal mountains. Could the rumblings of an undersea volcano signal what's to come on land? Today, let's explore the hidden link between Axial Seamount and the Cascadia Fault and dive into the big question, could this underwater volcano trigger a megaquake? Before we start, don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. Located 480 kilometers off the coast of Oregon, Axial Seamount is a large submarine volcano, rising roughly 700 meters above the surrounding seafloor to a summit depth of around 1,400 meters. It is built on top of the Juan de Fuca Ridge, a mid-ocean ridge where tectonic plates are diverging. At Axial, the Pacific Plate and the Juan de Fuca Plate are moving apart at a rate of about 6 centimeters per year, allowing magma to rise and form new crust. The volcano is oval in shape, about 50 kilometers long and 30 kilometers wide, with a large caldera, a central depression formed by previous massive eruptions and subsequent collapse. It has multiple eruptive fissures and vent fields where hydrothermal activity flourishes, creating environments rich in life and geochemical reactions. Unlike land volcanoes, Axial's eruptions do not produce towering ash plumes or lava fountains. Instead, lava oozes and flows across the seafloor, sometimes forming pillow lavas, other times creating sheet flows that can cover large areas. These eruptions are detected not by sight, but by instruments that measure seismic activity, seafloor pressure, and temperature changes. This remote volcano has erupted at least three times in the past few decades, in 1998, 2011, and most recently in 2015. Each eruption followed a period of magma chamber inflation, as detected by precise GPS and bottom pressure sensors installed on the seafloor. What makes Axial Seamount uniquely important is not just its activity, but the fact that it is among the best instrumented volcanoes on the planet. Thanks to the Ocean Observatories Initiative, a permanent network of sensors and undersea cables sends real-time data to scientists on shore. This includes instruments that track ground deformation, seismicity, fluid flow, temperature, and chemical changes, all helping researchers monitor the volcano's pulse. The observatory allows scientists to track magma movements deep below the seafloor, watching as the volcano slowly inflates with molten rock and then deflates when an eruption occurs. This real-time insight has allowed researchers to make rare, accurate eruption forecasts, something exceedingly difficult to achieve with most volcanoes on land. Axial Seamount has become a natural laboratory for studying submarine volcanism and the processes that govern plate tectonics. The data gathered from this undersea mountain not only helps volcanologists understand Axial itself, but also provides a window into the complex tectonic behavior of the entire Juan de Fuca plate system. And that brings us to its most profound connection, its role in the ongoing story of the Cascadia subduction zone. Just east of Axial Seamount lies one of the most dangerous seismic zones in North America, the Cascadia Subduction Zone. Stretching from Northern California to British Columbia, this thousand-kilometer-long fault marks the boundary where the small Juan de Fuca plate is diving beneath the massive North American plate. This subduction process has created a vast megathrust fault, capable of producing magnitude 9-plus earthquakes, events that can unleash devastating ground-shaking and massive tsunamis. Unlike more familiar faults like California's San Andreas, 
which slip frequently. Cascadia is a locked vault. For centuries, stress has built up silently, without any significant release. The last major rupture occurred in January 1700, triggering a tsunami that reached the shores of Japan. Geological and historical records suggest that such megathrust events recur every 300 to 600 years. Cascadia's silence is deceptive. Modern GPS, seismic, and offshore monitoring systems reveal that the region is undergoing slow tectonic deformation, with land near the coast subtly rising as strain accumulates. The concern among seismologists is that the next rupture could occur with little warning, releasing centuries worth of built-up stress in a matter of minutes. Understanding the entire system is crucial to understanding when and how this devastating release might happen. Axial Seamount and the Cascadia Subduction Zone may seem like two very different entities. One, an undersea volcano creating new crust. The other, a massive fault burying it. Yet both are part of the same tectonic continuum. Axial Seamount lies on the Juan de Fuca Ridge, the place where the Juan de Fuca Plate is born. Cascadia, in turn, is where this plate meets its end. This makes them two ends of the same system. Magma that wells up at Axial creates oceanic crust that eventually cools, hardens, and begins its journey toward the North American continent. Over the course of millions of years, this slab of oceanic rock moves steadily eastward until it is pulled beneath the continent at the subduction zone. This connection sets up a tectonic feedback loop. When magma erupts at Axial, it relieves pressure and slightly changes the dynamics of plate formation. Over time, this can influence the speed and characteristics of plate movement. In turn, the rate of subduction at Cascadia influences how much room is created behind it for spreading at the ridge. The behavior of one segment has ripple effects throughout the entire system. There is another way in which Axial Seamount may provide a glimpse into Cascadia's behavior through its earthquakes. Axial is seismically active, with hundreds to thousands of small earthquakes occurring each year. Most are related to magma movement or tectonic stretching along the ridge, but some scientists believe that swarms at Axial, or anomalies in its inflation patterns, might serve as indirect indicators of stress changes elsewhere in the plate system. Could a rapid swarm at Axial foreshadow increase strain on the subduction zone? Or could an imminent Cascadia rupture produce a pulse of stress that triggers activity at Axial? While there is no direct proof, some researchers are exploring these questions using detailed computer models of plate stress and crustal deformation. The idea is not that one event causes the other immediately, but that long-term tectonic signals may be transmitted through the lithosphere in ways we are only beginning to understand. The connection between Axial and Cascadia also reflects a deeper truth about Earth's geology. Volcanism and subduction are two sides of the same process. Where plates collide and subduct, material is pulled deep into the mantle, melted, and eventually recycled. Where plates diverge, that melt returns to the surface, erupting as lava and forming new crust. This cycle of creation and destruction drives the surface geology of our planet. The idea that Axial Seamount could trigger a Cascadia megathrust earthquake is both fascinating and controversial. At first glance, the two seem worlds apart, one a spreading center creating new oceanic crust, the other a subduction zone where that crust is eventually consumed. But they are geologically connected by the Juan de Fuca plate, and some researchers believe that changes in one may subtly affect the other. That said, there is currently no direct scientific evidence that an eruption at Axial Seamount can cause a Cascadia rupture. Axial's eruptions are typically moderate and confined to the ocean floor, releasing stress in a very localized area. In contrast, the Cascadia subduction zone stores massive tectonic strain over centuries, requiring an immense rupture to release it. However, it's possible that both systems are responding to the same underlying tectonic forces. In this sense, activity at Axial might be more of a symptom than a cause, an indicator of increasing regional stress rather than a trigger. While the seamount is unlikely to set off the next Cascadia megaquake, 
monitoring it could still offer valuable clues. Its behavior might help scientists anticipate broader shifts in the tectonic system before a major event unfolds.